Stop going back to the things that God is healing you from. Stop going back to the places that God is saving you from, that he's delivering you from. Whatever God is saving you from and he's closing that door in your life, stop going back to that place or to that person or to that situation. If God is saving you from an abusive relationship, stop going back to that relationship because maybe you fear how are you going to provide for yourself? How are you going to do it by yourself? If God is saving you from a bad job, a stressful job, stop going back there. Stop trying to hold on to that job because you fear, well, you know, with Corona going on and everything, how am I going to find anything better for myself to provide for myself? If God is saving you from bad friends, there are a lot of bad friends out there, so-called friends. Stop going back there because maybe you fear, you know, uh, loneliness, you fear being alone. When God saves you from something, stop going back to those places. If he's taken you out of something, it's because that something is no longer good for you. It's not good for you. Maybe it never was good for you or maybe it was to a certain point in your life, but now it's not. So when God saves you from something, it's because that something is no longer good for you, whether it's a person, a relationship or friends or a job or a situation or a lifestyle or, or whatever it is. God is closing that door in your life because that door is no longer good for you. But when he's trying to close that door, you're struggling, you're holding on to that door and you're trying to... You're uh, trying to keep that door open by force because of fear, because of insecurity, because of uncertainty, because of doubt, because of worry, anxiety. It could be because of any reason, but you're trying to hold on to that door. And I want to tell you, let that door close. Let that door close. You see, God will never close one door in your life without opening another door simultaneously. God will never close one door in your life without already having a better door for you. A better door for you. You see, he's not just going to come and close that door in your life because he has a worse door for you. No, it's always a better door for you. But if you're too afraid to let go of that door that uh, God is trying to close, you're never going to see the better that he has for you. So I want to encourage you, let go. Let go of that door. Surrender it to God, let go and trust God. Trust in God's timing, trust the, the process God is leading you through. Trust the path that God is laying before you. Even if you can't see how everything is going to work out, that's where you need trust. If you could see everything beforehand, you wouldn't need trust. God could also be trying to test your trust, your faith, how much you depend on him and rely on him. And so maybe he's got you out of a bad relationship. Maybe it's an abusive relationship, a narcissistic relationship, a relationship with benefits, a relationship, a relationship that's an intimate relationship that's just not healthy for you. It's not good for you. And uh, you're trying to hold on to that relationship. The reason why you're trying to hold on to the relationship is because maybe they're, 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 they're financially providing for everything, for, for all of your needs. And so God's trying to say, God's telling you, you know, come out of that relationship because I've got something better for you. Come out of that relationship because that relationship's not good for you. Come out of that relationship because that relationship is leading you away from me. And instead of listening to God and trusting on God and leaning on God's understanding and trusting the process that he has for you, the path that he has for you and the new doors that he has for you, you try to hold on to this old relationship how am I going to provide for myself? How am I going to do everything by myself? How am I going to make ends meet? How am I going to do this? How am I going to, you know, it's always how am I going to do this? How am I going to, it's, 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 it's fear based. It's based around fear. It's based around uh, not trusting. It's based around doubt. It's based around negativity, uh, uh, basically. So you try to hold on to that thing, that relationship that God's saying, no, let go. Why? Because you fear. Or maybe God's got you out of or is getting you out of a, a stressful job. Maybe the boss is abusive. Maybe the colleagues are uh, stressing you and it's just a stressful job. It's just not good for you. And in this job, you've got no time for God. You've got no time to pray. You've got no time to read your Bible. You're always drained when you go home. And it's just not the path that God has for you. It's not the job that God has for you. And he says, he, he's kind of orchestrating things for that door to close. Maybe um, uh, 
the boss says, you know, I'm going to have to lay a few people off or, but God's orchestrating everything, showing you that, you know, it's time to leave. And you're like, oh, no, I've got to hold on to it. I've got to I have to hold on to that job. I have to hold on to it. And then you, you end up doing things that you should do, things that you wouldn't normally just to hold on to that job. In other words, you're looking a bit desperate. And God's closing that God's because that door because he's saying, I've got, I've got something better for you. I've got a better job opportunity for you. But because you're too scared, you know, with Corona going on, how am I going to uh, find anything better with Corona going on? That there's, there ain't any better jobs out there. And again, it's, it's based, your decision and your way of thinking is based around fear. It's based, fear is very dangerous. It paralyzes you. It paralyzes your way of thinking. Uh, in, in other words, you can't logically think your way to safety. You can't logically think how, uh, how God could be working something out because there's no logic there because fear is not logical it paralyzes the logic thinking part of the brain which is the left side of of, of the of the brain uh, it, it could be that uh, God's God's trying to get you away from a bad crowd that you're currently in it could be so-called friends you know there are a lot of so-called friends out there they're just not friends and I, I've had my fair share of them and um you know maybe they're abusers maybe they're manipulators maybe they're you know the users just in it for the benefit only want to take 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 never ever ever give anything those are the so-called friends that i had and um the users abusers and um and god wants to get you out of that and he's saying you know he's trying to close these doors how how is how would God close doors like that? Maybe you find that all of a sudden your friends can't make it anymore, or it's not working anymore, or they've moved further away, or they they're dating now and they can't they can't make it, and um, as often as they could. And you see some you 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 know and you sense and you feel that something's changed, something's changing, even if you can't quite put your finger on it. But guess what? God is orchestrating things. He wants you to get you out of that. But because you're so afraid of I don't want to be alone. I don't like loneliness. I don't have, I won't have any other friends. What am I going to do by myself or any fear based way of thinking again? You try to grab onto those friends, uh, hold on to them. So now you begin to act in ways that you wouldn't normally and you shouldn't normally again, looking a bit desperate, making yourself lowering yourself, lowering your standards, make looking uh, desperate because you don't want to let go of that door that God is just wants to close in your life and I'm just using you know the bad relationship the bad friends the bad job I'm using these as an exa as examples it could be any door that God is is, is trying to uh, uh, close in your life and because you're all fear-based thinking you don't want to let go of that you don't want to tr uh, trust God so I want to encourage you and I want to tell you stop going back to the things God is saving you from just because you're scared of not being able to provide for yourself just being a uh, or because you're scared of uh, not being good enough for anything better or because you're scared of being lonely or because you're scared of stepping into unfamiliar territory or you're scared of leaving your comfort zone growth never happens in your comfort zone and I tell you what, all this, everything I've said, it all boils down to one thing. And that is not trusting in God. That's what it boils down to. It boils down to you not trusting in God. So I want to tell you, trust in God and stop looking back there because you're not going that way. God is saving you from there. God is trying to heal you from those things, whether it's a trauma, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a heartbreak, whether it's a whatever it is a lot of people have their heart broken by someone and they keep going back there looking back and chasing that person that has broken their heart you know stop stop doing that stop going back there the bible tells us in isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 through 19 remember not the former things nor consider the things of old behold i am doing a new thing now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So what does that mean? Well, let's break it down a bit. It starts off by saying, it starts off by saying, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Stop remembering, stop thinking about, stop dwelling about the former things, the old things. 
Stop considering the things of the old. Stop playing them in your mind and rethinking them. When God is closing the door, stop playing the those old things in your mind. God is closing that door for a reason. Let it go. Let it close. Close it. Let it go. Stop holding it. In fact, you don't even have to close it. Just stop trying to keep it open. Stop trying to force it open with your hands. God is saying, remember not the former things and nor consider the things of old. Stop thinking about them. Stop considering them. Stop dwelling, dwelling them in your mind. Stop gloating uh, over them. He continues to say, behold, I am doing a new thing. So he's telling you, let go of that. Why? Because I'm doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. It says now it springs forth. In other words, he's doing a new thing and it's already coming up now. It's already springing forth now. It's already manifesting now. It's already harvesting now. It's happening now. But because you're too busy holding on to the old, looking at the old, looking back there, he says, remember not the old things. Don't consider them because you're too busy looking at what's there. You're not seeing the things that the thing that is actually manifesting now, the new thing that he's doing in your life that is coming forth now it's manifesting now it says do you not perceive it in other words can't you see it it's so clear it's so blatant it's in your face can't you see it and you, and you probably can't see why because you're considering the things of old because you're too busy focusing on back there and this is why before he says can't you see it can't you perceive can't you perceive it he says remember not the old things why because he knows that if you're gloating if you're remembering the old things you're not going to see what he's currently doing in your life right now and then he continues to say i will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert what does that mean well consider a literal a physical wilderness it's a dry place nothing grows there everything's dry everything's dead but god says and it's a, so so god is actually talking about a spiritual uh, or wilderness so he says i will make a way in the wilderness he's going to make a way where there is no way and he will bring rivers in the desert so in all these dry places in all these dry places the, the spiritual wilderness the spiritual desert which is the the areas of your life that are not connected to christ to jesus christ because jesus christ is the one that brings life to your life jesus says i am the way the truth and the life and so all the areas in your life that are dead that are dry these are the areas in your life that you have not surrendered to Christ. These are the areas in your life that you try to control. These are the areas of your life that you've put in the hands of another human being, as opposed to in the hands of God. And God says, I'm going to make rivers in those dry places in your life. In other words, life is going to bring life in all these dry areas in your life. If you just stop considering the things of old, lean on him, lean on God, trust on God. When God is saying, let go of that, let go of that. Stop letting your fear keep you trapped in that situation, not wanting that door to close. The Bible tells us, for God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. In other words, this fear that you're feeling is not from God. It's not of God. And so when God gets you out when God gets you out or he's getting you out of a certain situation in your life, uh, before he brings you to that new place that he has for you, when he's closing this door, before he brings you right at the front of this new door that he has for you, um, there's a season, there's a period in between. And that period in between is the period where God is breaking the old things off of you. Because you can't enter this new door with the same old things. You are carrying the same old things uh, that you had in the new door. You can't enter that you had in the old door. You can't enter this new door with the same old mindset that got you in those old things. So this period in between, God is breaking that old mindset off you. That's why it's painful. That's why you might feel a bit scared. But fear is not of, of God. He has to break this mindset of you what is that mindset i've spoken about it in other videos it's the slavery mindset it's the the slavery mentality it's the mindset of a slave a slave says you know well i can't do that well i have to stay here because i'm being provided for what well, like i can't i can't do anything new i can't have anything new this is my life this is this is I have to put up with this. This is what I have to deal with because there's nothing better for me. I can't. I don't know how. It will never work. It's not for me. I'm not good enough. I'm not, 
you know that's the slave mindset slave means you're trapped somewhere it means you're you're <clears throat> something someone some place is controlling you you could be a slave to drugs in other words drugs are controlling you you could be a slave to a narcissistic person it means that person is controlling you controlling you you're a slave to it you can't do anything and so when god is trying to get you away from this place to get you to the new place there's a period in between and that period in between is going to be like a training season or a purging season or a uh uh peeling away of the old season and that's what god is doing he's breaking away the old mindset the slavery mindset the mindset that got you in to that slavery situation uh, to begin with and in these times you have to be you have to lean on god you have to lean on god uh, and trust on god because if you don't allow God to break away this mindset. This mindset is the very mindset that got you into that situation. And it's the very mindset that will get you back into similar situations if you don't allow God to break it away. It will get you. So even if you leave this abusive relationship, if you don't break away that mindset, you're going to get into another relationship just as abusive. If you don't, even if you get out of those uh, uh, bad uh, uh, company, bad friends, abusers, uh, if, if you don't break away that mindset you're going to get into another group of people just as abusive this is why God can't get you into that new door until he breaks that older mindset off you otherwise if he gets you into that new door with that same older mindset you're just going to create the same mistakes again and again the same slavery situations again and again why because a, 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 a slavery mindset it creates slavery situations slavery uh, results so you've got to let god break that off of you not only so you don't return to the or or you don't uh, so you won't hold on to what you already have but also uh, so you don't put yourself in similar situations uh, in the future so maybe god gets you out of a relationship use a relationship that slavery mindset uh, says oh, I have to stay in I have to stay in this relationship because you know I'm being provided for that's a slavery mindset so God's trying to save you from that narcissistic relationship for example and he's closing doors but you're trying to hold on to it because oh you know the that's how I'm being provided for that's a slavery mindset this this is like I want to stay in slavery because they're providing uh, a bit of bread for me and, and that's a slavery mindset. God says get out of slavery and he's going to provide a lot more for you. If you just trust, just lean on him. God has to break that way of thinking off you. Because it's a slavery way of thinking. And if he doesn't, you're going to ret you're going to keep returning to the old. You're going to keep producing the same old, the same old, the same old. Have you noticed that some people, they get out of an abusive relationship and then they get into a new relationship that is just as abusive. And then they get out of that one and then get into another relationship just as abusive. And it's a cycle, it's a cycle because they're in the slavery mindset. So always know that between the uh, the the old and the new, there's a period in between. Always. You're always going to have that period in between. And that period in between is where God is breaking that mindset off you. Always know that. And, and, that, uh, and that breaking away is uh, painful. Don't think you're going to put your feet up and it's going to be so, so, so comfortable. No, that breaking, the, the, the period in between is going to be uh, uh, painful but also this period in between apart from god breaking away the old mindset of you god is also building a new mindset because it's not just breaking away the old if you break away the old without building a new then what you don't have a mindset no he has to also build a new uh, uh, a, a mindset that it's going to be such a, a mindset a new mindset that is certain it will not get you into similar situations in the future so it will be a mindset of christ it will be a mindset of freedom because Jesus came to set you free from uh, uh, slavery. And so this new mindset that God is building for you is, is a mind that's going to, it's a new mindset that's going to get you new results. It's, it's like a, a, a Christ-like mind that's going to get you Christ-like results. A kingdom relationship, a kingdom job, a kingdom lifestyle, you know, a way of living that is of God. Because this way of living that, you've got, that God is closing the doors, it's not of God. God doesn't want you in that relationship. God doesn't want you in that job. God doesn't want you with the, those friends because they're not godly. And he's trying to break all, all that all that off of you and get you into good things. You know, kingdom wife, kingdom husband, 
and 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 you name it just way, way, ways of uh, god and but as i said this change is painful it's not going to be comfortable it's painful it's uncomfortable you're going to feel awkward uh people might even say oh you've changed oh look why is why are you so negative don't don't allow yourself to fall into any of that this change uh, period is going to be painful why because you're going to be faced with all your fears i can't leave that relationship because i can't leave that job because i can't leave these bad friends because you're gonna be, it could be because uh, no provision because you're afraid of being lonely because you don't think you're good enough you're going to be faced with all of those fears all of the fears all of the reasons that are keeping you in those slavery situations you're going to be faced with every single one of those demons your inner demons the inner giants the, gi the inner giants you're going to have to come face to face with every single one of them and guess what you're going to have to defeat every single one of them if you remember in uh uh, the book of kings in the uh is it kings i can't remember the book of kings or samuel or the book of samuel i can't remember when when david uh fought the uh giant it's a representation is fighting an inner an in in a in a giant during these times you've got to trust that he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world you've got to trust that god is more powerful than any giant that you are facing you've got to defeat those giants your inner giants your inner demons and that's the only way to be free otherwise if if you allow that that giant that demon to beat you you're not going to be free you're not going to be free from it it will still have power over you it will still have control of you and so it will still keep getting you in similar situations you have to defeat your demons the bible tells us in proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 through 6 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding but in all of your ways submit to him and he will guide your path so it's telling us trust in god trust in the lord with all your heart don't just trust in god superficially here or superficially there trust in god with all of your heart with your entire heart until there's no part of your heart that is doubting until there is no part of your heart that says oh i don't know if that's going to work trust in god with all your heart and it continues to say don't lean on your own understanding because your own understanding could be for example when david was fighting the giant your understanding could be, well, I'm so tiny and that giant is so huge. That's why it's called a giant. Don't lean on your own understanding because David didn't lean on his own understanding. He took out his slingshot and he and and, and he and and um and he hit the uh, giant on the forehead with a stone and the giant was down, knocked out. It was he died. He died. And so don't lean on your own understanding. It continues to say, but in all of your ways, in all your ways, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, in all your ways, submit to God. Submit everything to God. Submit the situation to God. Submit the relationship to God. Submit the, the job to God. Submit those friends to God. Submit your thinking to God. Submit everything to God. Why? Because it said, he's going to guide your, your path. He's going to direct your mind and your heart. He's going to... Uh, guide your path so trust in god don't run from god when times get hard don't run from god and start putting your trust in god in men mankind as opposed to god when times that get hard don't run from god draw closer to god and stop returning to the old things that god is trying to save you from stop returning to them whether he's you're he's in the process of saving you whether he's already saved you and then two, three months later, you say, mm, you start looking back there. Stop doing that. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. In other words, it's saying, if anyone is, is in Christ, he is a new creation. When you are in Christ, when you accept Jesus and he lives in you and you live in him and he lives in you and you live in his word and his word lives in you. If anyone is in Christ, you become a new creation. In other words, you're not going to do this by yourself. This is not something that you can do by yourself. You see, far too many people are scared of letting go of the old because they can't see based on their own understanding how they're going to do it with their own strength by themselves with their own power it's not you who does it 
All you have to do is follow the guidance of God and he's going to fight these battles for you. He would not send you in a battle that he has not already equipped you to win. To win. In other words, you've already won. If God sends you in the battle, you've already won. You're already victorious. You've already reached the other side. Remember they said the old is here, the new is here. There's a period in between. You've already reached the other side and you're already standing at the new door. If God sent you to it, it means you're already victorious. It's just slave mindset that can't see what's going on that keeps you stuck in the old. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, so the old has already gone. If you just open your eyes and see that the old has already gone and the new is here. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. The new is here. Open your eyes and see it. So, with that being said, if you need us to pray over you, comment your prayer in the uh, comment box or use the email to send us your prayer request via email. And we do a, a prayer every Sunday. It's not live, it's private in my prayer room. I pray over you, over each one individually. My book is ready. You can purchase that on Amazon or Kindle. The link is below. And for those of you who wish to sow in the ministry, the link is also below. Until next time, God bless you. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.